Look at me here. I've given you some meat. Look at this gel. Look at the gel. Hey everybody, how y'all doing? Are you a-okay? In your neck of the woods? What up? What up? Uh, man as a respect man. I your girl, Debbie from Donga Yard. Welcome you all to the Jamaican kitchen. Welcome once more. It is the Jamaican cooking journey. If you're new right on over here, special welcome. Thank you so very much. Those of you who are there with me and you're still here, you were there with me from the beginning and you're still there, so yo, manners and respect. Now today's video, I, I wanna if I wanna reach over the Jamaican mukbang, I see how I deal with the fish over there. Yeah, I saw I deal with stew fish that I had. Stew steam whenever, whatever. Now today, on the today's episode of the Jamaican cooking journey, I wanna share with you how we prepare some beef soup, fresh beef soup. Back then, I noticed that I must have the beef get there. It's expensive, it seems. Long back in the days when we used to have that good old beef soup, strong beef soup. I don't see nobody I put down there, look like it's bad. But I want to take you back right here and right now on this video to on how to prepare some fresh beef soup a saturday today no? and they always prepare those fresh beef soup on a saturday now first and foremost let me big up my, my, my meat man big up my meat man or my meat monger o'neill crossword market o'neill big up yourself my boss you're large and in charge yeah and him may get them pretty meat here from this is a part of the the, the the beef we call it the shin yeah mama so, so go man sitting in at them. So, they have been cleaned, they have been washed, and I want you to take precaution to clean your meat properly, even though it has this on. There's another thin layer that I've removed. That layer is slimy. Please, to take some precaution, take some pains, take some time, and remove it. Because if your stomach still like for me, kind of everything may stomach digest, you know. You know, sometimes you eat some things and your stomach does say, eh, it's not going to stay down here, sitting around. So take some pains and remove that slime. Use your knife sharp and, you know, let it be clean and proper. Wow, never one going to iPad. We're going to rinse it and put it in. So we have some shin, meat, and bone. And this is how it has these little parts in there. So let us go put all of these in our pressure cooker. I have three pounds here and I want that strong. These you might think they are big, but where when we when they are when they are cooked, you will see how they look. So if they are still too big, we can cut them while serving when or when we are ready to serve. So I have three pounds here, and I want to make a decent pot of soup. I don't want to make a pot of long water because I work very hard and I need to power up. Let me rinse this piece and come back to you. Monsoon come. Hi. Right, so I went to rinse it over my sink and it drop into something else again. And the old people them want their the, 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 the fresh beef soup, your sister. Hello, please tell me about it. Now, three pounds of beef shin right in here inside my pot. Properly cleaned, properly washed. Five cloves of smashed garlic. A little salt. Not a lot. We want when this, I'm going to use the pressure cooking method. I haven't got a problem with pressure cooking. Pressure cooking is a forced method of cooking. That when the steam that you that uses is it's cooked mostly by steam. So the steam is trapped within that pot, you know, with that liquid. If steam, steam ever burn you, if steam ever burn you, please comment. So steam cooking is more rigorous than regular, just like you know, you just have your pot locked. So I haven't got a problem with it. But if you have and you don't want to use your pressure cooker, you're going to leave this to cook for about two and a half to three hours on the low, depending on how chewy that meat is that you get. And then remember, say, you know, no, you know, because you never did it when that cover the barn. Now, let's go right on over here. You can put some water and I would say cold at this point. I would say cold. 
Look at me here. The water is just like just above the meat. Three pounds. And you, okay, my girl, you're shooting them up. The mortar must be just covering the meat. It's not for the way up here, so we're just going to be pressuring. It's a faster, forced cooking method. So if you don't want to use this method, what you want to do, you can leave it in your some something, whatever, and or you can leave it on the stove top. We're going to leave that to, to, to pressure. Know your pressure cooker. Know the time limit on your pressure cooker. Try if you're a person that just buy one, or if you have one all along, you must have known. Your pressure cooker is almost something like your oven. Try to study them. Try to know them. Okay? So you have an idea because this pressure cooker might do this faster than another one. Or do it slower than another one. I have got a black one here. It would have turned it in a mode in a 7 to 8 minutes. So I'm just using this one. Okay? So we're going to leave that there to cook. Pressure. The pressure cooking method. And we're going to come right over here to what we'll be using i'll be using some pumpkin but listen to me i'm not going to put no whole bag of pumpkin in this beef soup to turn it fully fully yellow we just want a slight yellow color that when it's through you can see the food you can see the meat we don't we want a little piece of pumpkin but not too much as we would in the chicken or the chicken food soup or the chicken bag and all of that now i'll be using some chill and yellow yam in this beef soup, I'm using some Irish potato. These are imported Irish. Me not keen on them, but I've, I've not seen any of our local Irish. So I have to resort to look at them for now. I'll be using my turnip. In this beef soup, I like the flavor of turnip in my soup, especially beef soup. Comment if you do. I also will be using this chocho, we call it in Jamaica, but some places say coyote. I might not use all or I'm not sure. I'll be using some carrots and I will not be using all these carrots. I'm going to be using some of these carrots to grate to make my dumpling dough. I'll be putting some carrot dumplings in this beef soup. You're going to say, Debbie, Debbie, yeah, and I'm not going to show because I have the full video on your know all of my video them in depth on the cooking channel. So what I can do is just to touch up the link, leave it in the description. You go check out how we did that carrot dumpling. Okay? So I'll be putting in carrot dumplings, Irish potato, and yam. If I would I would have liked to get some uh, two slices of bread food, but I did not. So when you're doing yours, if you like it, you can do it. If you want to put other stuff, cocoa dashing, go ahead. Okay? Meat is there, it's gonna be pressured, cooked, and I'm gonna go now prep my veggies so when we return in the next clip my meat should be cooked not you don't want to cook it too soft you know we might have to steer with the rest of stuff in there to let the soup come together so when you see me next progress will be made and you will see where we did must soon come so we are back now family our meat has been pressured to the stage at which i want it so i've removed to my soup pot so look at me here now. Remember I said to you, remember how big these pieces were before we put them in there? You remember that I told you that they would have come right down. So you know what happened? If you had cut them smaller, then they would have almost mashed out already. These are not fully cooked as you can see. They need a little more cooking. Even though some part of them have been hacked away from the bone. But we want we beef for cook that it's soft and nice when we drink it with soup it just a melt out in our mouth but don't want fear tear with beef so now by the time it's finished cooking these pieces will be fine for serving so we have all the little bone part them and all the little part them down in there so i took out this to show you so you gotta know if you are using the pressure cooker now we want to get our flame right up right here this is my bowl of vegetable including my pumpkin they have all been sliced in the same way. This is the pumpkin. This is the chocho or coyote. This is the turnip. This is the carrots. But the pumpkin is the only one that will cook fast the head of them and mash out. And that is what we want. The, other, the others will, will not be mashed. So we don't want, we know we kind of want them, but that we can see them in our soup. So let us get our vegetable in. 
All right, everybody going in because the pumpkin will be cooked first. And as we stir and go along, it will be mashed and we will get the little color there where we are going to really need not too bright of a color. If I find you look at them, I can't taste it. I'm not going to give no color, you know. You know, it's the season for them like this. Pour it in some hot water now. Carrying up our pot to about half or three quarter level. Lots of liquid because we are going to leave this for about half an hour to cook. Let the vegetables cook and get for gel to come up camera girl with the meat. Okay, probably I'm gonna put a little more water too. So when we return, it will be time for me to put in my dumplings. I have right here. I have gone ahead and I've done my carrot dough, and it is there. Um, you know, resting, and I'll have my yam and my Irish potato. These vegetables will be cooked. And they'll be uh, they might go come down you know they'll be there but they won't be as you know they might go be in a smaller pieces and you won't be seeing the pumpkin i guess the pumpkin will be like all if you know mashed out because you know the nature of the pumpkin so what we're going to do now i'm going to leave it for half an hour and occasionally probably about two to three times during that half an hour i'll come to stir and to let everything come together this is what where it is and when we return You'll see where we are at and where we'll be heading to. Must soon come. Okay, family, we are back. We are back. Let's get into the pot. So, remember, you lift your pot cover. You see what I struggle. Shoot them up, what them at the lens. Look at me here now. Let me get my flame down a bit. Look at me here now. Remember, I don't know how much you were following what I'm saying because some people say me chat too much. But I know some people were following me. You see the color of the pumpkin that we have? We never want the pumpkin color too, 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 you know, too stronger. This is the perfect pumpkin color that we want. You know, normally, if you have watched my other soup videos or me do my chicken soup, you see all the pumpkin or me cook it and puree it. We didn't want it like that in the beef soup. This is how we want it. And look at me here you now. You notice you know seen a pumpkin much have come up you notice are just the carrot and them something they are say look at me here they are cooking and they have been broken down or them a break down you saw me i say and you see what one that is after half an hour look at me here now now my carrot dough is ready put the camera up on me. no food kind this is the first thing remember i told you some people say yam before dumpling because dumpling i got water lag this will be on the mukbang channel and you will be see whether me or somebody eating this dumpling and you're going to see if it's a water lag because look at me here now perfect carrot dumpling dough soft and nice and juicy succulent and all of that and i eat we are going to put in right now because we have our irish and we have got our yams and we are putting the dumpling first soup dumpling right in carrot dumplings right in look at me here make them to your desire make them all you want we are going to finish make some of them here we're going to be putting a few pinas too and we're going to connect back with them must soon come dumplings in family dumplings are in carrot dumpling they are in and this is how it looks shoot them up camera girl at this point i i did not get i don't know i had dad to get beef flavored noodle but him say not getting a beef a chicken and it throw me off try to get beef right in there now this is a nice little thing but i wanted the beef flavor get your flame up a bit you see so we meet them still at all up because them still have a good way left for cooking up at this point now our kettle is boiling and we want a little more liquid that is what happens when you have your kettle boiling and you put it in there your pot still continue to boil but you know slow it down okay so look at me here this is where we had we're gonna when we we're gonna let this cook for about another 10 minutes when we return our Irish and our yams are supposed to be ready put them in we're gonna have our herbs and we're gonna have a little you know the little rest of thing them and we're gonna make everybody put them and make them chill down together because look here we're not gonna have no whole pop big big thing you know because look here i just three pound a thing and the thing come now want the strength of the beef so we we'll soon come back okay now family it's time for us to put in our other stuff into our soup pot 
And look at me here now. You see it's coming on? It's coming on real good. I have my yams and I'm going to be putting them in. I have my Irish potato and I want to show you something. Sometimes we cut our Irish potato flat, but sometimes you can cut it like this. But try, when you cut it like this, you must just run your knife through it. That's a little kitchen tip for you, if you did not know. Putting in all these little foods, yama with Irish, and all of that, okay? So we're getting in those. And some people might want to put dashi in or cocoa. You can go ahead. I'm not a dashi and a cocoa fan. I'm so sorry. So you can go ahead and put it in, if you would like. It's good. Putting in lots of green scallion and fresh thyme. Putting in these two peppers because they only look like scotch bonnet, but they are not full scotch bonnet. They must scotch bonnet as some far cousin. So I'm put in two. Pimento seed and some more fresh garlic. Flame up. Wanna go now? Look at what is happening. Look at me here. This is what it looks like. We don't want a lot more liquid, but we are gonna let it cook until it goes down a little and then. We'll come back. We want to taste right now for salt perfection. Look at me here. It's good for me. It is good for me. The, the flavor, everything good for me. Okay? So, oh, I, I have. We soon come, family. We are back. But Kemar girl was telling me something, but it's okay. We're not ready for that as yet. Look at me here now. Look at me here. Whoa. This is a pot of beauty. Must soon come back. Okay, now family, we are back. And this is what is happening. I'm cooking on less than medium. Isn't that a beauty, y'all? Okay, my girl, shoot them up now. Shoot them up and then see what happens. And let me tell you something. We don't want the soup finishing much thicker than this. This is beef soup. This is how we want the soup finishing. Because you see, we have some meat in it, you know. We have some strength. So look at me here now. I want to put me in some butter. If you don't want, you don't have to. Nobody tell me, say, Debbie, don't put no butter. Me don't put it already. So I'm putting in some butter to get this melonies. And my beef soup. Yep. Look at me here. It should be green basil but i don't have so may i go just take a little thing there and may i put in a little dried basil that little bit is a lot when it was green but now it is dry i can't put in too much look at me here let me get my flame up a little bit more a few more stairs another 15 minutes and our soup will be ready when you see me next i'll be plating up for you some of this goodness and also i want somebody i know sheppy is always reminding me these herbs i want to show you how to make a little bag from the cheesecloth so you can put the skeleton and the thyme and the pimento seed and it will flavor your pot just the same so when you're finished cooking you just lift the bag out empty it wash it for another time did you know about that if you know about it please come in look at me here one more time Remember, you know, go see me and stir up this and I tell you nothing more again. You know, when you see me next, make a plate up some of this niceness for you all. Because me realize, say, look here, the, little, the, the, the fall weather, I come on pound, you know. And me know it go. Me never come there yet, but me I use my head. You know, so come. We are back. Soup time. It was finished. I turned my flame off and left it for about five minutes to just settle down. Put a circle down. Yes, a circle. Look at me here. Now, camera girl, you there with me? Look at me here. From the bottom and up. Look at me here. Look at me here. Let me all show you something, what I'm talking about. Let us test a piece of our meat. That is the me and thing. Look at me. You see? You see the you see now the meat is properly cooked. You see it has that jelly look. 
Okay. Now, we're going to be plating up some for you right here and right now. The first thing we see is, you know, the carrot dumpling. Carrot dumplings. Irish potato, as we go along. And another carrot dumpling. Oh, when you soup with, drink soup with one dumpling in it. No, sir. Right here, Jamaican, you know, drink soup with one dumpling in it. No. Okay. Let's go finish plate up some and come back. We soon come. Look at me here. I've given you some meat. Look at this gel. Look at the gel. I've given you meat, lots of meat. I've given you chilani yellow yam, Irish potato, and carrot dumplings. Let me give you some soup with some of this strong vegetable mix that we use. Camera girl, you're shooting them up, camera girl. Camera girl, shoot them up. Shoot them up, camera girl, shoot them up. Her old time, long time, a big people think they may not parry. Uh, look up, play, play something, they may not. Why, sir? Me say. Make yourself a huge pot of this when you're on day off or when you got the time. This takes time to prepare. So you will not have it all the time because I know you're all busy. Look at me here. Let me clean up for you. This bottom plate is heavy. So I'll just, whoa. Come on, girl. Oh, you like the look? <laughs> you look good. From my kitchen to yours. From my Jamaican kitchen to your family table to your polite and most of all to that fall weather coming up. It is the fresh Jamaican beef soup. No camera, pami camera girl. You saw me. I did it from scratch. Please do enjoy. Now, if you have liked this video, remember to give me a thumbs up. Remember to help me to get to 200,000 subs for my Christmas. I'll be grateful and I will thank you. Make sure you are subscribed. When you do subscribe, make sure you hit the notification bell. Ah, Christmas are coming up. Whether they give me water, they don't give me water. I wonder if you know this is in overdrive. You know this is come back in overdrive. But come back with. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. Remember to make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell. Make sure you leave your comments below. So principal and decent that I can feel so comfortable replying to your comments. Our PayPal button is there. Our cash app is there. We emailed it. What more could you ask for? Debbie from Donga Yard. Bless, no stress. Please join us on our new channel. It is the Jamaican Mukbang. You have been asking for it. Now we have given it to you. You'll see over there how we'll be eating some, not all, of these foods that I'm preparing. You'll go see over there. You have asked for it, and now we have given it to you. Make sure you embrace it. Go over there. Subscribe to the channel. Watch the videos. Eat with us. Then from there, you know, say guess what? You're in another team. Bless, no stress once more.